She took the stand again today in the sex trafficking trial of Ghislaine Maxwell, the alleged victim using the pseudonym Jane in court. She's accusing Jeffrey Epstein's one-time girlfriend of grooming her, sexually abusing her, and forcing her to engage in sex acts with Epstein. But in cross-examination, Maxwell's lawyers pressed her to recall exact dates and facts from decades ago. Jane had said at one point in her testimony that Epstein flew her to New York on his private jet to see The Lion King on Broadway in 1994. Maxwell's lawyer questioned her on how she could have done that when The Lion King didn't debut until 1997. Jane testified she'd been incorrect in her timeline. The lawyer also tried to suggest Jane was unreliable and might be telling her story for money. She pounced on the fact that the alleged victim acts in soap operas, asking whether she's accustomed to memorizing lines, able to cry on command, and seeks drama. The lawyer also questioned why Jane didn't come forward with all the details of her story much earlier. But Jane later testified, I was sitting in a room full of strangers and telling them the most shameful, deepest secrets I had been carrying around with me everywhere. It was too difficult, too difficult emotionally, too difficult on every level. Let's turn to NBC News analyst Danny Savalos. Danny, Jane is the first of four women scheduled to testify here who say they were groomed for sex by Ghislaine Maxwell. What would you make of her testimony? Jane and the government have the same challenge that happens anytime you have a crime that allegedly occurred decades ago, and that's memory. That's keeping the story straight after so many years. But that same challenge also goes to the defense in that it becomes very difficult for them to come up with an alternate timeline of what happened so many years ago. Yet many of these charges are, are uh, the events being argued at any rate, are decades old. That, that's got to make it harder to prove. It makes it very difficult, especially when you date back to the early 90s. You don't have everything time stamped with text messages, phone records, emails, all the things that we would use today to put an actual time on an event. Plus, you have the fact that memories fade, witnesses die, and people move on, and they forget what happened so many years ago. And you saw that with the defense. They made every effort they could to exploit any gaps or failings in memory. You know, Maxwell's lawyers are arguing that she's being scapegoated by federal prosecutors because they can't try Epstein, who's dead. Legally, is that a solid argument? It's called the empty chair defense, and it's used all the time. You point to an empty chair and say, you know, that's the person that they really want, and they couldn't get him, so they're getting my client instead. It really is one of very few avenues for this defense, and of course they're heading down that way because they have to. They have to make Jeffrey Epstein the real villain and argue that Ghislaine Maxwell at most maybe met these girls, maybe took them shopping, but that doesn't rise, they will argue, to the level of committing the crime of grooming. Danny Savalos, thank you.